When I'm looking at a value product, it's easy to find things to criticize, and it's easy to say, no way, man, it's totally worth the extra 20 bucks to get that other one. But some people will have $75 shipped in their budget for a case, period. And they wanna know about products that cost that amount. Does it have competitive features? How well constructed is it? Is it packaged well enough to survive a trip across the state or country or whatever by courier? And is it simple to build in, but also with room to expand? So it's with those things in mind that I'll be reviewing the Cooler Master N600 KWN1 version, an enthusiast friendly case that can be obtained for as little as 75 bucks, including shipping after a mail-in rebate. The Jazz Mini phone and tablet stand from Cooler Master is now available in a variety of cool colors from these great retailers. Click now to learn more. Packaging wise, I'd prefer to see as much of the budget as possible allocated to foam rather than a full color box, but in this case, the middle of the road stuff that they're using here is probably fine, even with a system integrated into it, so it's not a huge issue. The front of the chassis holds three five and a quarter inch drives and is probably best described as unoffensive. It won't turn any heads with its practical, mostly mesh with a faux brushed metal stripe front bezel thing, but I still think performance-minded customers will be happy because the dual 120 millimeter fan mounts behind it will have basically unimpeded access to fresh air. Front IO is pretty comprehensive with reset power front audio USB 2 and USB 3 ports as well as an LED switch for the included illuminated front fan. Then moving on to the right hand side we find more enthusiast friendly intake vents. This one has a 120 millimeter bracket behind it that can actually be used to mount a single cooling fan for the drive cages or a dual 120 millimeter radiator giving this case a total of three radiator mounts that can be used at the same time while still retaining full usability of one SSD mount on the back of the motherboard tray and the three three and a half inch drive mounts in the front bottom, but not the adaptable two and a half or three and a half inch drive bays above those ones. Speaking of drive cages, the one on the back of the motherboard tray is a bit tricky to screw in, but doesn't put unnecessary strain on the connectors. The resizable and removable ones in the front are super handy, but perhaps a little bit unsightly with the extra mounting points just kind of hanging there. But these and the bottom permanent ones are extremely solid. Better than cases I've seen that cost twice as much. It's just too bad I can't say the same about the toolless plastic drive sleds, some of which arrived bent just from being tied together with a rubber band. The good news is that they work great if you screw them in. The rest of the outside of this case is pretty straightforward. The left side panel has a medium sized window that shows off mostly just the good parts of the hardware, but also the SATA cables coming out of the back of your hard drives. Although the pragmatic part of me acknowledges that there's a nearby cable management hole and appreciates the extra radiator mount that this cable visibility enables. The bottom has plastic feet and a removable fan filter that covers the power supply intake as well as an optional 120 millimeter fan mount. The top has a filter for its dual 120 or 140 millimeter fan mounts and finally at the back we've got seven PCI slots, a final pre-populated 120 millimeter fan mount and an integrated fan controller with two simple settings, low and high. It plugs in via Molex and handles up to two fans without splitters. Nothing special but still a nice to have. Around the back let's see what else we've got. There isn't a lot of space between the motherboard tray and the side panel. So unless you're gonna obsessive compulsively manage your cables, you might end up doing the old push down and slide technique to close up the panel. But the good news is that there is a little cubby in the bottom left there for stashing extras if you're not using a rad there. And there are lots of zip tie loops. So if you really wanna do a good job, at least Cooler Master provides the right tools. Speaking of cable management, the front IO cables are all black or sleeved and they're all adequately or even amusingly long. This USB 3 cable, for example, looks like it's designed to plug into the system next to yours rather than inside your own system. Still, I'd rather they're too long than too short. The last note back here is that the CPU cutout is only average size, but will work with almost any motherboard and the motherboard tray due to its anchor points on all sides is surprisingly strong. This is a sure sign that a case designer has done this kind of work before. The motherboard tray is actually quite important. 
Back around to the front to the window side, the cable management grommets are made of the most unexceptional rubber ever, but I was impressed to see them included at all in a case of this price. The extra auxiliary PCI slot is a nice touch, and I think everything else here I've sort of accidentally covered as I made my way through the rest of the case. So the conclusion for this case actually surprised me. There's some stupid, obvious cost-saving measure stuff, like the non-resealable bag for the included screws, and the fact that not all the motherboard standoffs were pre-installed, but all in all, it's actually a bit of a wolf in sheep's clothing. Aside from the side panel window, an optional feature, and the obviously enthusiast-oriented ventilation holes on the top of the case, from the outside, the N600 looks like it belongs sitting next to Joe in accounting, but based on the kind of hardware you can cram inside such a small enclosure, albeit at the expense of some cable management convenience and other creature comforts like noise isolating hard drive mounts, Joe from accounting could just as easily be a hardcore enthusiast gamer freak. I mean, you could easily pull out the top removable drive base, chuck a pump and a reservoir in that space, fill up the radiator spots, and with all the filtered intakes on this bad boy, you could easily tame even a liquid cooled CPU and dual high-end graphics card set up in here. So the only thing left to say then is this. Cooler Master, please stop putting glossy plastic on things. It's not a good accent strategy. Sure, it looks nice in photos and for three seconds when I take it out of the box, but other than that, it sucks. But the good news is that, other than that obviously very petty complaint, I don't think there are many criticisms I can come up with for this case. At full price, it's got some pretty stiff competition, but when it's on promo, it's actually pretty killer. Thanks for watching guys, like or dislike the video accordingly, check out the link in the video description for pricing and availability of this product, and since you're reading the video description anyway, I mean, who does that actually? D do you read the video description? Anyway, um, check out the sponsor us link where you can become a monthly contributor, buy a sweet t-shirt like this one, or change your Amazon bookmark to one with our affiliate code so we get a small kickback whenever you buy new tampons or whatever else that you buy on Amazon. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, thanks again for watching, and as always, don't forget to subscribe. And for those of you about to make a joke about how no one who watches this channel needs tampons, quite to the contrary, our female demographics have gone up from 3 point something percent to 5% in the last year. So there you go.